Hello and welcome to Wine Baron. Well, I suppose we could call this sort of Wine and Tree Baron now, but uh, well, the, the tree production is there to serve the wine production. In any case, let's get on with it. Let's go and check to see what the fields are like. What? Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that we are now early morning May. We've had a bit of a rest. And we're going to just have a quick check on the fields first. I think the grass is going to be ready to cut. We won't go into that too much in this episode. But yeah, that, that's ready to be done. We can do that. It's probably in the next episode. Let's go and have a look at the other field. That should also be just about ready. Let's just check up on... Yeah, the grapes, vines are looking okay. Right, let's just pop it to the unplanted field, I think we can call it at this point in time. <laughs> we'll have a quick look at that. We'll definitely make a start on... Yeah, it's really to be... A, we'll make a start on that during this episode. We won't show show much of it. We've seen in the various episodes that I've done plenty of grass cutting, but we'll still... We'll, do a, we'll show a little bit more when we cut the vine field. In any case, let's go and have a look and see what the winery is doing. It's probably run out of grapes, but let's have a quick check. It's probably got a bit of stuff to deliver from here. But we'll find out soon enough. He's still working. It's empty crates he's taking in, but... <laughs> I think we'll call it maintenance period. Yeah, no grapes. That's, for, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll check the markets out during the course of the day and uh, see if there's any deals to be done. It's a fair amount of grapes and grape juice, at least wine and grape juice to be delivered. Right, shall we pop on down to the sawmill, see what's been produced there overnight. Hopefully we've got one of each so we can get through and show you the production on the automated pallet factory. Very excited to show you that. I love it. Yes, plenty. Wooden beams seem to produce a lot slower, of course. Yes, we've got plenty of those. We'll get those delivered to the operation. Let's see how much wood we've got in. Yes, we've used about half the wood that we put in. Uh, we've got um, wood chips up there that we'll have to make a plan with sooner or later. Right, so that's working quite well. Let's go and get the, uh, the tractor set up and go and start making our deliveries to the to the pallet factory. I suppose in the future we can get them to just run it over there themselves as they produce it. But we'll see how that goes right now. Um, because it's new, uh, I would like to deliver it myself. Let's put the front end load on. just forgot that uh, before we do that let's just take you down to the forest that we planted quickly and have a quick look there don't think we'll be able to see a hang of a lot because um, the trees wouldn't have grown much in the in the one month that they've been in or the half a month that they've been in yeah you still can't really see them there's one there can just make it out. Yeah, well, they'll become more pronounced and we'll be able to see what, what the actual layout looks like. So those two Yeah, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna kind of come out okay. I'm hoping so. Yeah, you, you know you 
if you drive past here at any speed you wouldn't even realize that there's a forest being planted here at this point in time and I don't want to cut down all the all the ground cover really don't want to do that now I want to grow it in the natural environment keep the plants up we'll put some um, some beehives in eventually right let's go and get those planks long planks and beams delivered to the pallet factory really getting some really good use out of this little run around it works well with the trailer to a certain extent <laughs> trailer does push it around a little bit but um, right now with the equipment that we've got it does fill a bit of a gap right we've got the big bag handler or big bag yeah I don't know what you call it the big bag handler that's what I'm going to call it the big bag pickup big bag uh, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm really not sure what to call it. In any case, let's get these long planks in first. Can't remember exactly where they get delivered. So I think the long planks are just directly across here because there's three different input areas. There's two on the far side and one on the near side. I think the long planks are on the near side. We're going to find out soon. just realized that when we put those two pallets on we was probably going to go do a bit of a face plant so we'll put the weight on the back it's pretty substantial weight on the weight there so we shouldn't have too many problems picking up two pallets at a time that's the joy of this uh, bag handler is that uh, if you just position it right you could actually must probably stack the other one at the top and then pick it up but uh, that's well the distance are not that great to travel to get to to the um, to the production area so yeah we'll just uh, do two at a time yeah it picks that up with ease sways around a bit but if we just get it up and that looks better yes probably wouldn't want to be traveling too far with that on the front yeah that is the long planks as I thought Fantastic. Oh, I love that the stock actually gets shown on the outside. I was wondering what the uh, cones were there for. That's brilliant. That, I like that. Let's put the second one in, or the third one in, should I say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to presume that the it will be using a lot less ste um, steel beams, <laughs> wooden beams, um, in the production. But we'll look at the recipe a bit later. Fantastic, there we go. It's quite nice because you can kind of have a quick glance and see what your stock is like. don't know, it's probably not going to be all that accurate, but... Um, yeah, I think I need to push those together. I went in to have a look and see if, um, if we could pick the two up without pushing them together, but I think it's going to be better to push them together. How many are there? Five, I think.
be interesting to see what the short what the ratios are because um, I would think that eventually although I suspect that the pallet factory uh, produces pretty quickly so I'm not sure whether we will have a lot of um, a lot of uh, stock left over in the sawmill or unused stock should I say I think it will be quite a while before we fully stock the pallet factory that we can actually sell um, the wood product well uh, also I suppose it depends on how many how many trees we can get in once once the forest is up and running right now we have to pretty much manage what we put in we don't want to put cut down too many of the existing trees might even have a look to see if there's any way we can buy planks from or buy the inputs from I'm not sure that there is um, but yeah I think we will produce enough with what we're doing at the moment to um, just to keep the the winery stocked with pellets right let's just get around to the other side once again I'm not sure which side there's two delivery points there I'm not sure which one it is thinking it's probably the first one we come to let's give it a go try yep that's it and there they go well, it's taken one in automatically, so it's only showing one out there, which is good. So that would indicate to me that the recipes are a little bit aligned, or somewhat aligned. With the production from that we would get from the sawmill. Actually, it's probably not really, but I'm not sure that they would have been that the modders of the automated factory would have been looking at what the production cycle of uh, a sawmill is because there's so many different sawmills yeah we'll just have to manage it ourselves really if anything that's going to become overstocked it's but I have a feeling it'll be short planks I'm sure we can find a place to sell those Not exactly uh, symmetrical this pickup, but that's another joy of this bag handler is that it uh, can pick things up at the slightly different angles. You know, something like that where you don't have to be absolutely precise. Yeah, see those two went straight into stock, so definitely took at least a whole pallet into production although we're not producing anything so we haven't switched production on so that what I've just been saying has been a lot of hogwash really put this last one in Could have got a bit close on that one, but still. So we know where this one's going to go. <laughs> no need to check up on this one. Oh, you see there, now we've got five in there. <laughs> we only put one in there, but two showed. So yeah, it hasn't gone into production or shown as in production or anything like that. It's just me being, uh, presuming things again. Let's get this along. Uh, wooden beams, I was going to say long planks <laughs> get the wooden beams in I 
takes it off fairly easily. Well, we know where this is going to go, as I said the last time. This is going to show up. See, it doesn't show up in stock because it's only the one. So, yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's not a serious problem. Right, so let's go and show you around the inside and uh, get this uh, production fired up. I oh, might need to think about putting some uh, parking spots in for the management at the front here. In any case, we'll just pop in and go and get have a quick look at the operation reception area. This is the staff area, a bit of production going on there. Right, and there we have the recipes. We've got stock in there. Get it started up. Got the control over there, just keeping an eye on the automated process. We'll have a closer look at that in a little while. Oh, we've got a customer waiting to buy some some pellets. That's good. So a receptionist. Not quite sure that that is working a tire. Yeah, but maybe maybe we have to just accept what pe and let people wear what they want to. <laughs> right, so there we go. These are automated robots, so our robots, production robots. Not so easy to see through to, to see to see through the grill. So we'll uh, not worry about health and safety to start with, and we'll go and get in a little bit closer. At the saw area, I'm going to put this on the other side because that does tend to swing across. That's all. That's the actual assembly, ro assembly robot and the packing robot. So, yeah, see how that saw just flipped out there. If we were standing there, we would have been, although it doesn't seem to be on. We would have got a good knock. So that cuts the, um, the planks into the right sizes. There come the blocks from the wooden beams. The assembly bot gets onto working, puts the blocks on nails them in at the same time. All very efficient. Good thing of course is they don't get tired. As long as there's stuff for them to work on. Cut up the, some more of the So it's looking like the long planks are the uh, pr uh, predominant use. Then you use the shorter planks just to fill in the... the gap in between. And there we go, packs it up. And that's the whole automated process. All we have to do is collect them now. Looks like a whole, looks like a whole lot of stock out there. We'll have to, well, we'll investigate that and see how much it's actually making. I'm sure those are not ten pellets on there. They might be. If they are, then we're going to make a lot of money out of this. But I doubt it. I don't know any productions that produce that quickly that they could make all of that in the little while that we've had this switched on. Right, let's jump in. The tractor and uh, it's going to drop off the front end loader. 
So we've got the grass still to look at. We need to consider whether we're going to buy some grapes or not. I think we should buy more grapes. Uh, it's not ideal and we want to use our own grapes, but uh, I think keep that production running and making some income. Um, we spent 20,000 on grapes the last time and I think we've kind of brought in around about well, close to 40,000 so um, of course there's other inputs and that type of stuff but there's a reasonable return on that it's probably be better when, once we're using our own our own grapes be interesting to see how many how many or how much we get from that field I mean, it does produce rather quickly and it uses quite a quite a bit of grapes so that will also depend on how many vines we eventually end up planting right let's just unhook the weight as well and we'll go and pick up the mower and just come get that mowing started we'll get it done most of it done with a worker We've seen so much mowing over the over the series that we've done. It's always grass that needs to be cut. A uh, little uh, empire is starting to take. Well, it's probably half the bank's empire with the loans that we took to build the um, the pellet factory. That's nine hundred be nine nine hundred thousand euros into the bank not too worried about that, it's long term loans just didn't need to make sure that we are able to cover the repayments every month that's another reason why we need to get most probably going to need to buy grapes in just to make sure that we are keeping up on production and keeping keeping income coming in between that and anything we can get for hay bales off the fields right so I'm just going to put on a we've got a front end, end mower for the other field but for that big field I'm just going to lease the the trailing mower just so that we can get that done quicker it's going to cost a bit of money but these are all starting up costs really because uh, once we've got that into vines as well then uh, and the vines are pr producing we um, we won't be so dependent on trying to get a big a big hay intake although when I say that we didn't really look after that field very well we only got about 50% yield off there but it sh should still give us a reasonable amount of income Just making sure that we've got enough power in the tractor here. <laughs> yeah, we've got we okay. Only just. Only just. It's gonna struggle on the hills. But let's see we put on a worker, you know, as long as it gets up the hill eventually, we'll be okay. Yeah, two fifty suppose when you add the two horsepowers of the both machine we are actually underpowered uh, I think it'll be okay I think it'll be okay if it's a problem we'll deal with it then I don't want to go into I should have looked at it before before I started to be honest Right, so we'll get this started. We'll do a headland, and then once the headland is done, we'll put it onto a worker. Get the front going as well. At least it's giving us a bit of quite a bit of width in the cutting with this. 
this arrangement that we've got on. So even if it does slow down up, it's definitely going to slow down up the hills. Right, so we've just finished the headland and a little bit of extra. It has struggled up the hills, but it's made it without, well, with dropping speed, but not too bad. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll just get on with it, put the work on and it's done. Well, it won't be completely done because we'll probably have to clear up little bits and pieces. In any case, let's go and have a look and see if we can uh, buy any grapes. Oh, we'll do the deliveries first. I think, yeah, yeah. Let's go kind and of get some income in. Let's uh, sell what we've got here. So we'll get that all hooked up. We'll try the auto load today. See how that works. See if we can auto load by reversing into the machinery. Machinery <laughs> into the factory. <laughs> yeah, because we've got the tractor, the big tractor working. This has got more horsepower than the little, um, the little vine tractor. So we'll do the deliveries with this one again we'll just take it easy going down and we'll try not to jack jackknife too many times or to spin out probably will happen but we'll try it we'll we'll try not to let it happen let's put it that way <laughs> oh dear i like the look of this thing that's i like playing in this thing I like driving it around almost looks like a dune buggy doesn't it very useful. Come on, I'm sure you can get it in there. Get it back a little bit. Always in the way of trying not to ride over or kill our workers. Yeah, that's everything. I think we can get it strapped up and how many have we got? How much have we got? The thing with this autoload system, you don't know until you strap it in there how much how much you've loaded up. That's just a, just under three thousand litres of each. It's not gonna make us rich at this point in time. I suppose if we have um, if we have an oversupply of grapes, we could uh, we could make raisins as well. We could put a production factory in, make raisins. While I was one pondering there, we have made our way down to the settlement and we're just about at the farm shop. We'll get this all delivered there. I'm sure the local locals will be very glad for a fresh supply of wine and grape juice of course for the kids. <laughs> I suppose down the line I'm just looking at the bread that's been sold there we could uh, possibly put a bakery in but we'll have to uh, find a place to put some fields up and bah, let's not let's not get that far ahead let's concentrate on what our main aim is getting the wine production up and going secondary aim is getting the pellet production up and going which is started so the wine is going but the input the vine the vines are not going just yet Right, so we're back up at the farm now. Let's go and see what the pellet production has been doing. Ah. Just automatically turn into the winery all the time. 
I really want to go down to the pellet. On on automatic as they say. So let's get down get on down to the to the pellet factory. The nice thing is that it's not very far between each of these productions. I wonder if this will load onto or to load the um, the products from the I doubt it because it, and it's bigger than a normal pellet. No, it doesn't. It's a, it's actually good because it means that we have to deliver it ourselves or we'll get it or we'll get the sawmill to deliver it. Right, so let's go and see if there's pellets that need to be dealt with. I'm sure there will be. We'll also see if we can autoload directly from the from the production floor or not. I'm hoping that we can, because I suspect that um, just looking at the rate that they're putting those down, that each of those is probably only one one pellet, although it looks like it's ten. I think, uh, my my suspicion my sus suspicion is that it's just one pellet, so it's going to take a lot of delivering. But we'll cross that bridge with that when we get to it the first thing that I want to find out is to make sure that these pellets can be can be utilized in the in the in the winery it's been a little niggle to me I'm pretty sure they will be able to because they're made by the same water but um, yeah just want to make sure let's get those strips it's 14 so that's showing 14 but it's not saying so that normally shows liters so so 14 liters would indicate to me that there's 14 pallets there. We'll sell a load and just see how much we get for a, a load after this. Um, I'm not quite sure what the price is. We'll check that up as well. But if each one of those is a thousand liters, then hey, we're going to make a fortune. But I, I can't see it. I've got a feeling that each of those is one litre, so in other words one pellet. Which I suppose is a slight flaw in the in the operation, because when we were buying it from the shop it just showed as one pellet. I suppose it's got to do with the scripts and such like. In any case we won't get into that, I don't know enough about modding to be able to talk about that type of thing. Well, it's been delivered, so it means we can use them. So that's uh, the main reason for building the pellet factory, is to keep this fully stocked with pellets, especially once we get into full production. So let's go and get another load now, and then we'll sell those and just see how much we get for those. Just still thinking about the about buying in some grapes. I think it has to be done. We have to keep that going. We also want to utilize our pellets that we that we're making now. Maybe we jump the gun a bit by building the pellet factory. Whoa, there we go. See, <laughs> uh, 
you just got to drive carefully with it that's all not turn too sharply right let's get this next lot in see if we can load more than 14 this time or not switched it on we haven't switched on auto load Let's see what happens yeah there we go it looks like it's loaded more oh we stuck we can't get out <laughs> because we've got we've got pellets so it hasn't loaded with the where the um, where the entrance is but it's loaded some behind that oh dear we'll have to go around and uh, manually offload those <laughs> all little things that you just keep don't always think of yes yeah, so it's probably not going to be that easy to we have to be very careful that it doesn't but how far we go in so that it um, doesn't uh, create a situation where we are wedged into the into the factory we are loaded into the factory <laughs> uh, yeah. well these are these are things that you need to learn you know find out yeah you see that it's right up to the roof right, so let's get the, those, the top lot off should be okay. Oops, we don't want to take the bottom lot off at the same time. It's a bit messy. I'm just going to get the other lot off from the other side. Then we should be okay. Provided it doesn't just auto load while I'm walking around. Oops. Oh, there's two pellets on this side. Did we knock it off? No. There's another one up there, so it's three pellets. So how many you get? 14 minus 3. It's probably only 11, 11 pellets on there now. How did we get 14 on the last time? And we were able to get out without a problem. I don't know. Well, just jump back into the into the beast, and off we go. Just see how it gets. Strap it in. Let's find a place to sell them. There we go. I think they'll be down at the bottom somewhere. I see him somewhere where all the wood stuff is. There they are, pellets. So, per thousand litres, it's a good price. Uh, so, the best price is at the uh, at the farm sale point. So, that means we don't have to travel too far. So, we've got 11 pellets on here. Yeah? So we're going to kind of find out we're either going to get a hang of a lot of money or we're going to get not much. I just can't see it being a hang of a lot of money because we've only been producing for like an hour and it's just going to put the whole thing out of, out of work. So I'm actually kind of hoping that it's not a lot of money and we'll have to kind of rely on dis distributing the pellets so getting the factory to deliver it directly to the winery and for getting people to come in and buy their pellets from the store to discounted price so that we don't have to spend all our time and money ma making the, the deliveries we 
I suppose it, it, in time we can yeah only 61 euros so those are I would say are a pellet each so yeah delivery wise it's going to be a bit of a logistics nightmare so we will put that on to distribution to the winery to start with and then we will sell directly from the factory at factory prices um, so people who want to buy pellets from us can just pop in and it will also keep our receptionist busy right so we'll let's get another load loaded up and we're going to take that up to the to the winery ourselves just to see if we can master this delivery technique or this uh, loading technique should I say without building ourselves or loading ourselves into the building again yeah, that looked okay So there's probably just a little sweet spot where you've got to, though we didn't get 14 pallets on. Yeah, so there's just there's a bit of a sweet spot. You've got to try and keep the um, the entrance to the to the factory sort of along the last line of of pallets, the end of the or the end of the trailer. And then that fills it up from the top. But that's all that's probably gonna mean we're always gonna have pallets stuck towards the back. So yeah, I think uh the distributions and direct selling mode is probably gonna be the best. Let's just get these offloaded and we've got our our productions up and up and running. Quite a small um, trigger point area for this type of operation. Oh, just driving into the forklift. Not sure we're going to need the forklift if we can also load directly from the from the factory. The wine and the uh, and the grape juice I'm thinking about there. And we can get the pellets either distributed or. Or direct sales right let's have a look and see what we can buy what um, grapes for in the market that's a reasonable price more is the same as we paid the last time I think right so let's get 50,000 this time we won't put it all into the factory to start with we'll I think our trailer takes 12,000 litres, so we'll put two loads into the factory. That should keep us going for a day and a bit. And we can, or for a month and a bit, should I say. And we can uh, just keep the rest in stock, and uh, hopefully, this 50,000 will get us close to, um, to harvest time. We don't want to be sitting with a lot of bought in stock when, we've, when we're harvesting. So it's 50,000 bought. Let's get the trailer hooked up and the grapes delivered so that, that can get going, get working. Let's get that opened up. So we have to do a double click really so it will to open up on the right side. Really good looking trailer this. I like it. But it doesn't have a bit more capacity but we don't have far to go. I'm wondering whether we should have actually built this silo into our um, 
into our production facility I suppose we should have but hey ho at these built where it is built if we're making a fortune we might get it moved but right now it is what it is as they say in the classics Ooh, nearly lost it there got a bit of extra weight of the grapes now as well it's not that the um, that the beast can't pull it pulls it easy because it's fairly high horsepower um, it's more that it's pretty light compared to the trailers so the trailers push it around a bit but yeah it's serving its purpose rather have it working having to work cautiously with it than it just sitting around doing nothing which is kind of what I feel the other little tractor is doing but that will come into the fore when we need to uh, when, we, when we need to prune and we need to um, we need to work the vines after after production right we'll get another load in loads up nice and quickly as well nice I like it uh, got to look to see if there's a way to close it without actually having to open the other side first <laughs> yes I'm pretty pleased with the way things have gone in this um, episode how things are moving along still a little bit nervous about the about the loan but uh, yeah as long as we can keep wine producing and we should have bales to sell next month or maybe even later on in this month yeah later on in this month we'll have bales to sell a lot of that will be done off camera of course just that we've seen it so much in all the other series I will do a little bit for those who are watching this series for the first time just to we'll do little bits and pieces so that you can see but it's a basic production this this series is a little bit about trying to do things that we would not normally do or that I would not normally do right I think that's where we're going to end this episode if you've enjoyed it Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheerio!